Hello, my name is Sandy, and I have a Baby Lock Solaris 3, which is the same as a Vision. And I am on a journey to learn as much as I can about this machine. I have a handful of videos out there uh, where I'm sharing projects about machine embroidery. Um, just recently, I released uh, a video on couching, and I want to experiment more with that. I want to do some large embroidery some IQ designer things. So the list goes on and on. So if you want to join me on my journey, consider subscribing and give this video a like and perhaps consider making a comment to let me know what you think. So today I am working on a t-shirt for my nephew and I am I'm showing you the the bunnies that I've stitched out so far because you wouldn't want to stay for the whole video especially because this design is not I didn't pull it from I didn't buy it from like any of the major embroidery design sites I around Christmas I was at my local sewing store and I found a CD that was pretty old let's see I don't know if I can shine the light on that let's see if I back more it's a amazing design CD and it shows Easter. It's called Easter Morning. There's 23 designs, 4x4, four 12 designs for 5x7, and one design for 6x10. And I chose, let's see, I put, I chose this one, which is the two bunnies. And then on the back, there's a Happy Easter sign, and I'm changing the colors up. Um, this cd looks like it's from 2014 so this is an old cd that they were no longer needing and so i bought it and thought maybe i'll use this down the road and so i used the um port on this machine and then i have my cd drive i loaded it in changed the size a little bit and started stitching it out of course i don't always have the colors that i need i'm trying to keep track of the colors that i have versus the ones that i need knowing that i'll never be able to fit all those colors in my sewing room so um that's where i'm at i thought rather than show you the whole video i'm just going to show you the part where i'm stitching out the last 12 minutes and hopefully this will all go well this is going to be the wording up here. So I've got some thread loaded. Since this is a boy, for a boy, I'm toning down the colors. I'm not making it pink. And um, which looks like the happy is pink in this picture. So the, I changed it to blue. And so we'll just get going. Hopefully I won't have any issues with my... Nope. Yep. I don't know why it keeps doing this. Um, I had trouble with my, actually, maybe I'll pause it, see if I can pause it. So I'm back. I had a thread get tangled. I had to re-thread it. That happened once before tonight. And I already changed my needle because I did actually use my needle for two other projects and I don't always change my needle every single time um, but I felt like as soon as I start having that you know where it gets tangled in the back out of the blue I know it's time so this is the first time I ever paused the video and then started it going again so hopefully you'll be able to see that okay on your end. So it's stitching out the word happy. And then there's, uh, looks like, I don't know which letters are next, but uh, let's see here. It's got Easter. It's got a stitch out and then some swirly things and then a, a little flower but you know what i'm gonna try and tone that down 
they've got it. It looks like it's a daffodil. And daffodils are yellow. So maybe I'll do like yellow, a darker yellow and yellow and it won't look so... I don't think I'm going to put the pink around the top of the daffodil. I'm going to just do a darker yellow. So since I just decided that, I'm going to go look for my yellows. All right, hopefully these look good. Let me see how those look. I don't know why the light just seems off tonight. Okay. Can I light a little more over here? I'm gonna need to get one more light because I still don't feel like I have enough light in here. There is no overhead lighting in my craft room. So I've got ring lights, one on the left, one on the right by my iron. And, uh, why did I do that? Sorry. <laughs> I'm treating this like a live video because eventually after you get, I think it's 50 viewers, you can do live videos. But I'm not so sure I'm ready to do lives yet. So I figured I'm going to just keep practicing, making videos, practicing, doing all kinds of things. And then when I get ready... I feel like I won't waste your time. Okay, let's gonna stitch out the word Easter now, and I'm gonna keep the blue. Hopefully, it doesn't get tangled again, or I'll have to pause. Well, it seems good so far. If I can get you in there a little more without dropping the phone, or. bumping you. Look at those rabbits. Those bunnies are so cute. They look bigger than they are. They're only like, uh, I think it's like four by four. And this part in the middle, I'm going to have to press it. Hopefully that part will relax in the middle. But I was at a edge-to-edge -edge last day. This machine will do edge-to-edge -edge quilting. And it's, it's works so well. I've only done edge-to-edge -edge border, borders right now. But it will do edge-to-edge -edge quilting, um, which is very complicated. I won't go into that here. But the way, the difference between the class I was at today and the computerized edge-to-edge -edge is that the designs that I used today were from a CD. Uh, where's the book? In case you want to know. It's from Emily Scott Designs, Edged Edge Quilting on Your Embroidery Machine. And it's got uh, quilting designs in there. And um, so we were practicing on a piece of fabric, a, a sandwich. It was, uh, the bottom was uh, the, um, the back of the, fa of the quilt, pretend quilt. But a pretty nice size, so I walked away with a nice finished project. The back was uh, supplied. The um, the batting was in the middle, and then there was fabric on top. And so we quilted it and learned how to use the design the design in the book slash CD. Uh, and all of their helpful hints and tricks. So I learned this at the Sewing Source Inc. in Lake Villa, Illinois. Um, they have a website. I think I guess I put that website. I'll put that in my description. But I was there doing that today. And one of the things you have to do when you take that class, which is why I brought up this, up, this whole thing up, is that in order to do this project we worked on today, we had to raise our presser foot, embroidery presser foot. And um, when I started this project, I forgot to put it back down. And so I'm wondering if maybe that's why it's a little puckery there, because I've never had that before. It probably has to do with that. And so I put it back down, but it was after it had gotten started. I have a feeling when I 
am done with this and I use a, you know, I'm, I'm at the iron and I use a press cloth and I press it, it will relax and look beautiful. Uh, but that's why I went into that story was because of this, the way it just looks a little puckery, to be honest with you. And I'm doing the same things I normally do. I have on the back no show mesh, fusible. And then behind that floated some tearaway uh, stabilizer. On top I've got the water soluble and it's doing a beautiful job. Ever since I I lowered the presser foot, it hasn't been having issues like that little buckle there. So um, I think definitely remember to put your foot down if you go to one of those classes. So they say to put a little post-it note on your machine when you are working on edge to edge and you've raised your presser foot because it is very easy to forget. So it's almost done with the Easter. And it looks like it's got some Oh yeah, below the Easter there is up the flower and then two little uh, stems with vines and then we'll be done. So there's seven minutes left. This is just a regular old t-shirt I think I probably got it at my local craft store. I don't always like the t-shirts I get from there. I've been buying them from uh, some of the larger department stores. Because then you, you know you got a really nice, good quality sweatshirt or whatever you want to embroider on. You spend all this time on, if you're doing machine embroidery, you definitely want to do it on something that's made well, that has a better chance of washing well, because I don't know how many times I tell you I've embroidered something and because of the quality of the t-shirt, it doesn't wash well. Okay, time to change thread. Time to change it to, it looks like it's looking for a medium brown. Oh, I'm going to try... I'm going to do this one. No, it's it's the medium brown. So I'm going to do the medium. You know, I just realized and that this thing comes off. So let me back it up a little bit. I'm using Floriani thread. And I'm not sure if the other spools are like this. But they've got this um, circle at the bottom. And you can, what I've been doing, and I I didn't look at and see anything out on any site or anything, but after I'm done using my thread, I'll wrap it around and then I'll stick the tail in there and then reattach the circle. Sorry. I don't know if you guys knew that. I didn't know that, but I've not used Floriani thread before I got this machine, so... Uh, I had no clue that that's what I should do. And it was driving me crazy because my thread rack is on the wall. And there's threads all over the place. Okay. Let's see if I can get you back down in there. I'm hoping that I don't, you know, bump my camera. My, and knock you out of the video because I have done that I see a little bit of a ripple it should be fine there but I'd like to smooth that out so it is sewing it looks like the stem and eh, the stems and then it'll do or is that a leaf that looks like a leaf I think the next part is the stem and then I've got, uh, because this is an older pattern, it looks like I have a few more jump threads to trim, which it doesn't look that bad at all. So I'll use my special jump uh, stitch trimmer. 
and my special tweezers to get those out without so I don't trim them without you know clipping the the beautiful embroidery work while doing so. I actually have a video out there uh, about that trimmer. If you're interested, it's out there. I got that at my local sewing store too. We need to support our local sewing stores because uh, we need to support small businesses. Rethreading it. We're almost done. I don't know if anybody's still out there watching or still tuning in because I'm not live yet. Someday. Okay, we're ready. I've got the the next brown, which is a little bit darker. Hopefully I picked the dark enough one. It's like a Trial and error. So yeah, this is from Amazing Designs. I don't even know if they're still around. I like reusing things. As long as they stitch out okay. But I did actually get another one on a CD from Amazing Designs. And uh, it was an eagle. CD and I really love it because my husband likes eagles and those stitched up beautifully as well. I had a hard time matching up thread because it required so many threads. Um, this one is this design is 28,161 stitches and we're on 26,080 something hundred. It moves fast. We've got four minutes to go. It was 58 minutes long, according to the chart I'm looking at, and uh, that doesn't include the time it takes me to change the thread. So this is a definitely a project that I hope my nephew will like. He uh, likes to celebrate things. He decorates his whole yard for Halloween and Christmas, and... I think he's going to like it. Yep. Okay. Taking that out. Now it wants... Okay. It's doing like the... A lighter color. So it's like a very pale... Pale yellow. So I've got... Three different colors of yellow. Oh... Like a real pale, medium, and a dark. And that's all I'm going to do for the daffodil. Guys like flowers too. See, that takes, what, a minute to change threads? Hopefully it will not hiccup. Yeah, I don't know why it was giving me trouble. That top of the daffodils right up by the bottom of the S. But it looks like it's doing fine. It's kind of stitching three parts and then it will move. It's only like one minute for each color of yellow except for the last color it is. Oh. Two minutes and then it wants to stitch that orangish color at the top but I'm not going to make it orange I might make it a very pale pale pink depending on how this looks I've got to watch it stitch out and decide done with that one I'm going to wrap up the ends so now it's wanting like a, a darker yellow. And I know this is on a yellow t-shirt, but that's okay. I think it's okay.
because it's off the, yeah, I can definitely see the yellow on yellow. I don't know if you can see that. I want to see that. You can really tell. I don't want to get too busy. It'll be interesting to see how this daffodil stitches out. You always know, wonder when the, the designs are this old, how they will, if they will cooperate in the newer machine. But so far, so good. I would love to find an iris CD of my favorite flower. Okay, now it's going to outline. Oh, it wants the same color. Okay, I can just go two minutes on this one, then... Two more minutes. I'm gonna find one more yellow. I might do this one that's more of a gold. Yeah, I like it. So this is another test for you to see of uh, how this machine can use when I use the CD drive, the external CD drive, and an old CD with embroidery designs on it, how it will stitch it out, and it's doing a great job. And there's actually, when I was first starting to film videos, there's some older ones out there when I used that Eagle CD. So, if you want to check those out, it's up to you. We are almost done. One more thread load. And then we will be done. And maybe this was... I tried to leave just part of what the design was stitching out so you don't have to watch the whole thing. I'm getting pretty fast at loading the thread. This is like a very like golden yellow. like it's doing this the part where you know some of the daffodils have that orange color and I'm not gonna change the thread I'm just gonna let it go yellows on yellows on a yellow t-shirt people might not care for this but I think I'm just trying to make the flower suitable for a young boy who loves bunnies who loves Easter yeah we have uh, we're counting down to the seconds now I'll take it out of the hoop I'm gonna back you up like I need light coming from here we go whoops lopped I'm so sorry but there is the design there's more light for you and um, I have to take off that top layer of uh, water soluble mesh let's see the back not too bad I got some threads to clip let me tighten this up. You can 
I want to thank you. Sorry for my messy uh, library there. I don't have much room in this room. But there is the beautiful design. And this will just tear off usually. And whatever's left will melt off when I put water on there. That's how that works if you've never used that. But I'll rip out this a little bit and then if there's anything left, I'll put some water on it and then cut away the back and I'm done. Okay, thank you for watching.